Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be discussing the anatomy of the inner ear. And to do that, we're going to be looking at this micrograph image, which you've probably seen at some point late in Anatomy 1 or early in Anatomy 2. Now, you can learn all these pieces by just rote memorization, but actually to really understand what's going on here um, and to really help you learn the physiology later, it's helpful to get a perspective on what you're looking at first before we just dive into learning the individual pieces. And so to get that perspective, we're going to look at a diagram here of the middle and inner ear. So this is zoomed out quite a bit, and of course it's a cartoon, but let's actually look at what's going on here. Okay, let me actually move this for a minute. So we've got the tympanic membrane right here, and in a separate video, that is the physiology video, we go over the transduction of sound waves. So we know that the tympanic membrane, which is our eardrum, vibrates, which then in turn vibrates the malleus, which then vibrates the incus, which then vibrates the stapes. Now recall that the stapes is in front of this structure called the oval window, which basically leads into this tube system right here. Okay? Now if we look at this, this tube system, on top we have the scala vestibuli. Okay? This is also called the vestibular duct. In here, this purple region, okay, here they call it the cochlear duct, its other name is the scala media, and then on the very bottom we have the scala tympani, which is the tympanic duct. In other words, from top to bottom we have the vestibular duct, the cochlear duct, and the tympanic duct. Well, that's really interesting because if we look at this microscope image, we have up here the vestibular duct, the cochlear duct, and the tympanic duct in the same order. So what is this microscope image that we're looking at? Well, actually what it is, is they've taken the inner ear region right here, and they've really just taken a cross section of it. And it doesn't matter where you take the cross section, we can just put it right there. And so they basically just kind of sliced it in half, like basically this is like a hot dog, right? And you just cut the hot dog in half, right? And then they're just gonna look at it this way. So your eye is looking at it face on like this. So face on to the cross section. And then this is what you see. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense first of all what you're looking at. So now let's actually take a look at the various pieces here. And I think the first thing we should do is really go back and look at the ducts. Okay. So up here we have the scala vestibuli. This is the vestibular duct. And typically when you're looking at this, although it doesn't have to be, the vestibular duct is typically on top. Okay? Um, right here, this is the smallest one. Um, this is the cochlear duct, also called scala media, although typically cochlear duct is the term that's used. Then on the very bottom, we have the scala tympani or the tympanic duct. It's also worth noting before we go any further that the vestibular duct on top and the tympanic duct on the bottom actually contain a fluid called paralymph while the cochlear duct contains a slightly different fluid called endolymph. Right? That's more important for the physiology part of the course, but for the anatomy it really makes no difference. So those are our three ducts, and of course they contain fluid. Now let's take a look at the membranes. And what we're going to see is that these membranes actually separate the duct work. Okay? So this first membrane up here, okay, looks like a very thin string. This one is called the vestibular membrane. Sometimes if you look this up online, it'll be termed Reisner's membrane, but the most common term is vestibular membrane, and you can actually remember that because it's adjacent to the vestibular duct, so vestibular membrane. And what we see is that the vestibular membrane separates the vestibular duct up here from the cochlear duct right here. Okay. Now if we go down here, this one's a little bit confusing because we have this organ sitting on top here, um, a very small organ, not an organ in the sense like the heart or the lung, okay? Um, it's a very small organ, but actually underneath that, and we'll actually zoom in right here to see it a little bit better, um, this membrane right here, it's just this bottom part. This is actually what's called the basilar membrane, okay? So just so you can see what I'm pointing at here, this is our basilar membrane. Uh, the organ that sits on top, which we'll look at in just a minute, is what's called the organ of corti, also called the spiral organ. Okay? But the basilar membrane sits right beneath that. Um, other than sitting beneath the organ of corti, the basilar membrane also technically serves to separate the cochlear duct from the tympanic duct all the way down here. Now, there technically is a third membrane called the tectorial membrane, but we're going to discuss that in just a minute. So now what I want to do is actually zoom in on this organ of corti. 
Now, unfortunately, you won't be able to see every minute detail here on the organ of corti. Um, if we had a scanning electron microscope image, you would. Um, so there's a few things here that are going to be left out. But it suffices to say that if we look on top of the basilar membrane, this whole thing right here is really the organ of corti, this big lump of cells. Uh, the other name, of course, as I mentioned, is the spiral organ, and this is the microscopic organ of hearing. Okay? So this is actually what initially, this cluster, senses hearing stimuli and initially transduces that information into an electrical signal that goes toward the brain so you can perceive hearing. Now, these little purple dots that are clustered all over this organ, these are nuclei of cells. And the cells that make up this organ, for the most part, are called hair cells. There's two types, outer hair cells and inner hair cells. Um, you can't actually distinguish them here uh, very well. But notice on top of some of these hair cells, we have this other membrane right here. It's the smallest of them, or at least I should say it's the shortest in length. This is actually what's called the tectorial membrane. Okay. Uh, now, again, I didn't want to get too much into the physiology here, but let me just explain this because it's useful to know. So right here, we have all of these parts of the middle ear. They're amplifying the sound waves, tympanic membrane, malleus incus stapes. And the stapes, when it vibrates, it vibrates this fluid called paralymph inside the vestibular duct. Okay. Um, so that's important to understand. Now, if we look at a particular region that's vibrating in the vestibular duct, it will vibrate the corresponding region in the cochlear duct. In other words, it's kind of one of those things where if you have one thing vibrating and it's touching something else, that thing that it's touching will also be vibrating. Kind of the way to think about it, that old song that they used to sing when you were kids, probably, you know, you've got the foot bone connected to the ankle bone, which is connected to the shin bone, connected to the, you know, all that stuff. So when the vestibular duct, this fluid vibrates, the fluid inside the cochlear duct also vibrates, and then that fluid vibrates the basilar membrane. Okay, so you've got multiple things in contact that are actually vibrating. And eventually when this basilar membrane vibrates, it kind of moves these hair cells, these hair cells of the organ of corti. And essentially, in the most simplistic terms, when the basilar membrane vibrates and then these hair cells move, they sort of scratch against the tectorial membrane. So whenever these hair cells move back and forth due to the vibration, they're scratching, they're scraping against the tectorial membrane, and believe it or not, that's actually what initiates sound. And so hopefully that makes sense. So again, I didn't want to get too much into the physiology here, but hopefully just by looking at all this stuff and getting some perspective on it right here, we can understand all the little pieces here of this microscope image of the inner ear. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.